So, a um, very good evening to everybody, and um, thank you, Dan, for joining us this evening. Um, Dan is one of my clients who uh, is a private client. They've been doing rent to rent for uh, coming up to three years now. Uh, I'm going to let Dan share with you in a minute exactly what he's been up to and how he's doing. Uh, we're going to chat about rent to rent in general and about his uh, business. Uh, and then we're going to go it open up to questions. So, uh, Dan, tell us about where you're at at the moment, a little bit about your company, and you know, you've got the open floor for, for a few minutes. Sure, okay, uh, thanks, Glenn. Um, we're actually three and a half years old next month. So, um, so yeah, we, uh, uh, was it February the uh, 7th is when we, when we turned three, um, and we, um, We've hit so many milestones um, since we started. Um, very briefly, uh, we needed to create a cash flow business because of the positions me, my dad, and my brother were in. And we knew the property was the one that we needed to get into. And rent to rent uh, was the first strategy that we wanted to um, start developing. Um, because we didn't have a lot of capital to begin with. And we wanted to create a cash flow to um, leave our previous jobs or, or stop doing the work that we were doing. Um, and so we have worked non stop for the last two and a half years. Um, we have uh, 17 houses in our portfolio. Um, in fact, I'm in the 17th one right now. Um, and we're decorating at the moment. And we, when this is full, we'll be making nearly 16 grand a month. Um, we have uh, obviously with COVID, we've uh, encountered quite a few issues recently. Um, but because we know the market well, we, we, you know, we know our business very well um, and we've got great skill sets, we have overcome any issues that we've faced and we are, I think, genuinely in the best position that we've ever been in um, due to some refinancing of the business through the, uh, the bounce back loans, which we were able to get. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we are starting, I guess, this kind of new chapter in this, in this year on kind of very good foot. So that's kind of where we're at the moment. Okay, so have you got a target this year? Have you got um, the bounce back loans and you're, you're off from running? Where, where do you see yourself um, this time next year? Um, well, the actual target for this year is to double the portfolio. Um, not necessarily the properties, but the uh, profit. Um, we, um, due to the refinancing that we were able to do, we were able to pay back with quite a few investors. Um, including uh, the bank as well, and we actually are a few grand a month better off because of that. So, accidentally, we are um, on track to, to doubling the, um, the, the, the profit uh, just through the pandemic. Um, so, that is pretty good. We haven't had to get more houses in order to get that. We've actually just, we have you know, all the houses already, it was just refinancing, which has been a fantastic thing to do. Um, but in terms of the rest of the year, we've got 83 rooms now. I want to. I want to get to hundred by the end of the year. Um, you, you, the want, house, um, you want to, or are you going to? Oh, we're going to. We are going to. <laughs> we are going to. Just check We've it. already got a house locked in for October, which will make us about twelve hundred pounds a month. Um, so that will bring us up to the eighty-nine rooms. So I need to get two more houses with yeah eleven rooms. So we're going to need six by the five bed. Um, and then yeah, we. I think yeah, we'll be well on on our way for uh, twenty twenty. Okay, right. I'm going to wind you back to your very first deal because the first deal that everybody does is always the hardest one. Uh, and typically, you know, when my clients want to get into rent to rent, it takes them around three months before their first deal's landed and up and running. And then from there, every month or two months, they normally add another property. Uh, and yeah, um, obviously there's cash flow issues and all that type of thing to take into account. Um, but a lot of estate agents, when you go to estate agents to try and do a rental to rent out, um, they, they call it subletting. What, what do you actually say to agents uh, in order to get them to give you a property to rent out? Well, there's a lot of things you need to consider um, before even going out to try and uh, get anyone. You need to know exactly who you are, what you're doing, why you're doing it. But it, ultimately, when you do go out to find properties, you need to frame it in a way that 
yes, I mean, on paper, we are subletting, you know, which is, that's how it is. But there's a lot of legalities involved, there's a lot of, of the details involved with it. Um, mm -hmm. It's about educating the agents and landlords yeah. about what we do and why call they it. choose us. You can't call it a subletting, can you? Because exactly. that's a big poop, yeah, no, that's illegal. And, and also, the term rent to rent is used within the property industry. Um, and so we would never use the terms rent to rent either. Um, we are a, a, a company that specialises in creating high-end house sheds. And so we leave suitable properties, renovate, fully furnish um, for a long, uh, we have a, a long uh, contract with, with the landlord. So we actually created our own brochure, which highlights all of the benefits the landlord and the agent will have going with us. So we are essentially uh, we're a management company, really, which we're going to break it down. But we are uh, using other people's assets uh, to create our income. So how um, does the estate agent feel if they feel that you're another tier of management? Yeah, some agents like it because it's less work for them. And it genuinely is, especially with us. But some agents um, are so unfamiliar with it and they're scared they actually don't want anything to do with us. In fact, the house that we've got right now, the number 17, uh, the one we're in at the moment, that was up with an agent. And I did my usual spiel to them, but they weren't interested. So we, um, and which happens, um, which is fine. Now, there's other ways to get around it, but we actually found the details of the landlord who went directly. The landlord told the agent to give United Relocation um, a viewing. So the agent called me again asked me what we did and I told him again but he again was not happy and was a little bit angry with me on the phone for some reason I don't really understand why but then we thought you know what I don't want to deal with these guys because they're not listening to us and it wasn't anything that I was saying or not saying it was just because the way that they had been conditioned it's quite an old school agent we actually ended up going direct to the landlord the landlord was not happy that they were blocking us the, um, the landlord actually let go of the agent and um, we were direct with the landlord and he's got a very good deal and um, we got the keys on June the 1st and we've already let one room just goes to show that we know our area well um, and that the demand is there and we follow through with what we say I mean, we're fully decorating this house and we're fixing a little bits here and there things that normal tenants won't do it's, these are the kind of things that agents really need to actually take a step back and, and understand the kind of thing that rent to rent companies are doing and know that it's a benefit to the agent because it's a lot less hassle than a traditional single left with a family, may have kids, pets, or a couple. Now, we, we actually are a, a real benefit. What surprised me earlier on when you said that uh, a lot of letting or letting agents are familiar with the term and the name rent to rent, because that wasn't the case when you first started. <clears throat> no, not at all. Um, yeah, it was like three years ago. It was, I mean, it was a thing. It's been a thing for quite a long time. Um, however, there's a lot of causes being done. There's a lot of, uh, lot of people thinking they know what they're doing and actually going out and framing things incorrectly. So and we, we get these ourselves. We get letters from these, these companies who are like ours, but um, they, they don't market themselves very well. And, and they are using all the wrong terminology. They're using all the wrong words. Um, and... But being quite, some of them are quite aggressive in their approach, and some have no idea what they're saying. There's a lot of um, discontinuity there. There's, uh, there's a lot of companies who just, who are just trying to go around whatever they can, but they, you need to really do your research, and we need, we need to know the area. Um, so yeah, um, so that's something. That's why a lot of agents are, are, are seeing the term rent to rent and seeing these kind of, I guess, amateur companies and, and not wanting anything to do with it because it's not, it's not what it actually is. Okay. We do what it is. We, we do it very well. Yeah, well, you, I could say you've run a very, very professional um, outfit. Um, so, one of the things we did, we spoke to you a little while ago, and my main questioning and everything was about how the lockdown had been affecting you and everything. And now we're kind of moving away from lockdown because we're pretty much over it at the moment and things are pretty much back to normal. So this is kind of not so much about the lockdown at all, it's more about moving forward. Um, but would you like to give us just a minute or two about how lockdown affected you and how you got over some of the challenges? Yeah, sure. Um, so when lockdown 
first started, we were actually doing up our previous house. In fact, so um, briefly, the last house we got was number 17. However, during lockdown, we actually had to give a house back. And that was a house we had on service accommodation by Birmingham Airport. The, the lease was coming to an end anyway, and all the bookings had gone. Um, so we just thought, you know what, let's give it back. So yeah, the house that we got in February was uh, 17, but now obviously uh, this one is would have been 18, so we went back to 17. Um, so we were in this house decorating, lockdown happened. We had left um, most of the rooms anyway, which was great. So then we just kind of went home and we just cracked on with some admin work and that kind of stuff and our own little projects. Uh, a couple of people left, couldn't, couldn't afford it um, for whatever reasons. But it was fine, everything was fine. And then kind of six weeks, eight weeks in, that's when things started to change, people started to leave again. And in fact, two weeks ago, we had about eight people just giving their notice because they realized they can work from home home and they won't be in the office till January. Therefore, they didn't want to be paying rent. So yeah, about two weeks ago, we were like, oh dear, what are we gonna do? However, because we know our skill set, we kind of mix things up and we got some of the people involved uh, and um, we started marketing our rooms a little bit differently and we start, the, the, the rooms just started to fly off the shelves. We've um, well, I've let quite a few this week. We've got a few that are coming empty but it, it's, it's nothing more than usual. Um, we've had a lot worse months so, so ultimately now it's just about getting those rooms gone and then when they're gone we can just on any maintenance that we were planning on doing um, and then I, 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 I finding more houses. Um, so in terms of coming out of lockdown, we've learned a hell of a lot about the business in terms of what works, what doesn't work, what we don't need to think about and consider anymore. Um, we've tightened up on a few things. We're working on a, on a new CRM system because we're using Podia at the moment, which has been great until now, but we're kind of outgrowing that a little bit um, and we want something else. So my brother Simon's working on that. Which is very exciting. Not um, sure if you're, you're aware, but we've had some CRM experts. We did a CRM uh, webinar last week, and we've yeah. got a CRM training day coming up through them. Um, and they, they just know all the CRMs inside out and backwards, and they would, you know, after about a 20 minute conversation with you, know which one would be best for you. So that, that might be something Excellent. worth looking at for you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, um, indeed. indeed. Um, and, and it's made us realise as well that you know, we're actually making a lot of money and when all the rooms are let, which is, I mean, we're never going to have every single room let, you know, we've got a lot of rooms, but, you know, we incorporate those voids into our um, monthly uh, kind of figures. But, you know, we're in a very good position and I'm, I'm so proud that we started this just over three years ago because if we didn't have this now, we'd all be screwed uh, with income, like a lot of people in the country right now. Okay, so if someone was starting from scratch, let's say they were starting with 20 grand, would it be realistic for them to get to a three grand a month profit um, in six months? Absolutely, you need to have the right team around you um, and, and the right education, but yeah, 100%. You, you could be with 20 grand, you could, you could be making at least three grand a month. Yeah, depending on the area you're in, in of course. Um, yeah, definitely the Okay, and how long do you think it would take an individual? Because you've, you've got a couple, three of you all working on the same business. But how yeah. long do you think it would take an individual to get to 10 grand a month? And when you're at 10 grand a month, would that individual be able to deal with that business on their own? Yeah, um, it's, it's interesting because we talk about this, like, we always say that we could not do this by ourselves. Like, individually we have, you know, some good skills, but there are some skills we don't have. Um, that's where we all come together and form the, the kind of the parity. Um, I genuinely do not think that one person can, can get to 10 grand by themselves. You need to have a lot of systems in place. You need to have people doing other jobs, because you end up doing all the viewings, you end up doing all the deals, um, doing the renovations, all the decorating, all the HMO uh, stuff, doing all the viewings, getting all the paperwork done. You know, there's so many things you have to consider with rent spending. It is, it is not a kind of get rich quick kind of strategy at all. Well, no, property, no property is, but it is. I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, um, coming up to 20,000 pound a month profit 
in a business that you started up three and a half years ago is quite an achievement for any business. Yeah. There's yeah, not it's many so businesses that, that after that period of time would be making that amount of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are very impressed with what we've done. And the thing is, like, there's no real secret to it. It's just know what you're doing and, and don't stop. And that's what we've done. Because it's three of us, we've all you know, been able to, to kind of stop and start at different points, depending on schedules and things. But ultimately, the whole business was, was moving forward every single day. I mean, and it still is. But we're just very fortunate now. We're in a good position where a lot of it can run by itself and we've outsourced jobs okay. as well, like to our property manager, who does a lot of work for us now. Cool. Um, all right, so now moving on to your favourite subject. Uh, yeah. Tell us a little bit more about you, your background, and you know where you are now and other things. Um, so I'm an actor. That's what I trained in. Um, I've been acting professionally most of my life. I finished drama school in um, 2009, um, which was in a recession, probably one of the worst times. Then and now is one of the worst times to finish drama school. Um, well, especially now because there's nothing going on in the arts. Um, over the last 10 years, I've been on a massive roller coaster of of, of, of just wanting to act and create um, comedy um, whilst uh, personal things are going in my life and you're know, trying to have you know, a personal life as well and, and trying to make money and it's you know, loads of things just to, kind of, to, to consider and then obviously when things don't go to plan like with, with money or credit card debt um, relationships, all these things that kind of are not serving you um, to move forward and then like <clears throat> It was a couple of years ago when we had um, this massive kind of revelation of like, okay, we, you know, we, we got into like three and a half years ago before we started the business. Me and Sai and my brother, we were like, right, we need to change this. We really need to change. And so a passive income is something we've always looked into or, or, or setting up assets to pay us each month because we didn't want to do any, any other work. We were working in events and stuff, working for other people, doing things we didn't want to do. And it was only when we decided to change and, and I make, I make a difference to our lives, that's when everything kind of started to fall into place. And the things that weren't serving us were dropping out. Um, and, and in the last couple of years, yeah, my whole life has completely changed. And now I have my own production company um, and we have um, direct access to some incredible um, people in the industry, commissioners, broadcasters. Um, I'm working with some incredibly talented people. I'm finally in a position where the last 10 years since being out of drama school, I had to learn a lot about myself and a lot about life. And everything is coming together. So with the business and finances, and uh, kind of like personal growth, and the people that I'm around are just absolutely fantastic people. Um, I know that I'm helping people and people are helping me. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing position that I, I personally am in right now. And I'm able to fund uh, the work that I'm doing with the people that um, I'm associated with. Um, so yeah, it's a very exciting moment that I'm in right now. Okay. Um, right, so, tell me a little bit about how you got into property at the first start, at the first start. Um, to begin with, so my dad's always had buy to let properties. Um, yeah, because he had his own business and shop for team. Um, and that was, uh, that was what he did for over the 30 years. And then um, he always had property. Um, and I remember when me and my brother were little, they were renovating some houses in Wolverhampton, um, making it into house shares for, for students. This is before all of the severe legislation kind of came in for HMOs. Um, and I just thought that would be really cool to do, but didn't know how to do it. Um, and obviously acting was my thing, so that's why I trained him and stuff. And then it was um, 2015 when we bought a house in Stoke for 49 grand. We did it up and then we sold it for 72. And we're like, oh, this is great, but we want to we wanna make it bigger. We want another zero on the end of the property here. Um, so like, I've always loved interior design. And I just love properties and grand designs and kind of uh, under the hammer programs. I just love that. But I always thought I needed my own cash. However, that isn't the case because as if you've got time and someone's got money, you can join uh, together and create something that you can share, which is what we're doing. We've worked with a lot of investors. Uh, in next events, and we've actually um, there's a few projects that we have in the last couple of years been trying to buy with some JV partners, but have fallen through. However, we've learned a lot about the industry, and we're pushing forward, um, and, and that kind of that passion for it is, is burning. 
Um, and so, yeah, so that kind of dream I have a little about property developing and, and, and all kinds of flipping and things, it is, it, it is very much um, present. Um, it's just waiting for the right deals, going out and finding them. That's, that's the position right now, because we know that there's money everywhere. Um, lots of people have got a lot of money, but don't know what to do with it, whereas we know what to do with it, so if we join together, we could all benefit. Okay. All right, well, I'm going to uh, move on and ask anyone if they've got any questions to ask you. Uh, and start asking okay. some questions for everybody. Um, so bear with me just one second. And I think we've had a few questions coming in already. Right, so here we go. Michael's sent a message out to you. Um, I know of a 10 bed guest house in Newport. A guest house not selling for 14 months. Is this interest, uh, say, a JV? Michael, the whole idea of rent to rent and what we're doing this evening is where you rent a property off somebody uh, and then rent the rooms out. So if they were, um, you know, if it was available for rent, then I'm pretty sure that, um, uh, uh, in fact, talk, talk to us a little bit about whether or not you would be up for JVing with people or also the franchise thing that you've thought of doing. We've not spoke about it recently since lockdown, but kind of where, where are you with that at the moment and franchising and taking um, on a couple of samples um, franchising? Franchising, franchising was, was an idea that you know, we had a while ago. It is something that we're not actually actively trying to do anything about. It is something that I think will happen one day. But that is, yeah, something that we're, we're not actually pushing for at the moment because we've got um, other things that we want to work on um, in franchising. I think I think we'll develop and come um, when the time's right. But in terms of JV with people, absolutely. Um, I think you say it was Newport, obviously, that that's not our area. And we wouldn't deal with anything more than six people in a house. The dynamic changes, um, you know, if, if, let's say if you've got a six bed and you can make a grand, but then let's say you've got a 10 bed and you can make a grand, well, what's the point of going for the 10 bed when you have to fill seven rooms, oh, sorry, eight rooms, and then nine and ten, that's your profit. Whereas with the six bed, you've got to, you've got to fill four rooms, and then five and six is your profit. Yeah, so, yeah, so, we're, so we're, we're, yeah, we're not 100% on the numbers, but yeah, I, I get you want to stay location-based, but what about the, the franchise thing you were thinking of doing? Where, where are you with that? <clears throat> yeah, so, if, I mean, franchising, it, it's, um, it's definitely something that we would like to do and um, however we aren't in a position to actually we haven't got the real drive for that right now we, you know we're focusing on other things i think that franchising it, it will happen when we've got the right I think, team in place um and uh, and we don't I mean, know exactly what we're doing in terms of that because we wouldn't want to create something just on a you know slap dash approach we want it mm -hmm. to be uh, we want it to take over the country that we would want it to be the go-to rent to rent company professional house shares that's how we would frame it okay. um, to take over okay so Tessar Jane says uh, good evening Dan where are your rent to rent properties based are they nationwide or do you operate locally um, ours are in the area where we're from so Birmingham Solid Hall Warwick and Coventry when Coventry was a, an accident that was kind of given to us uh, but it works well okay cool um, Michael says does high-end house share mean the property is an Airbnb rather than an HMO? Um, no, so I think there's a bit of confusion there. You can have a high-end house share, it just means we've got more expensive furniture, where you take care of the detail in, in the painting and decorating. We've got a proactive maintenance team. Um, I put some of my rooms on Airbnb. So Airbnb is obviously service accommodation. Um, you can have high-end service accommodation, high-end HMOs. Um, we just like to create very good quality homes that people can live in with all the services included and um, so that is what i mean by high end okay um so david said to be clear again what do we tell landlords or agents okay um i mean i could be here all day telling you what to say so i can't really say in a couple of minutes um my advice would be to get some proper training um, wherever you feel comfortable. There's a lot of courses out there, a lot of people doing it. There's a lot of groups on Facebook you can get a lot of free information from. In fact, there's a few books I would recommend. One, um, there's a couple by Jackie Edwards. I read those um, before I started. 
they're great. I think it's, just, I think it's called Rent to Rent uh, or Rent to Rent for Beginners. Um, and then Simon Zucci, he's got Property Magic. That's a great book as well. I read that beforehand. That gives you a lot of information in there. I, I literally, you know, it, it, I, I can't really say everything right now. There's not enough time. Um, but get the education first, then you'll know where to start. Okay, cool. Um, so Mick says, I understand only do rent to rent deals in his own location. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we're in the West Midlands. You've got to be realistic where, you, where your location is. We wouldn't, if it was a good deal, say Leeds, we, we're not going to take that because that's three hours away. Uh... We'd give that to someone else if, if, if we were given the opportunity to have it. Um, we could sell the deal to someone. Um, but yeah, because um, when you have a, a HMO portfolio, when you've got a lot of rooms, um, you're going to need to be in, this, in, in a very close proximity because, trust me, there's going to be a lot of issues um, arising and you're going to need to get to those houses quickly. You want to go up to a, an hour maximum. You don't want to be travelling any further than that because your day just becomes about driving. Uh, Venu says, um, when setting up a rent to rent, what are the initial expenses? Um, when setting up a company, you so register your company, your company's house, um, get a website done, get some business cards done or get a leaflet done, explain what you do. Um, getting a, a, we have a virtual address, um, so get that done. It's no need for an office. We work wherever we want. Um, then you need to start making phone calls um, and getting deals booked in. So I guess initially it would be natural expenses, um, you yeah, know, getting to deals and stuff. Um, and then obviously the capital needed to 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 get the property. So you need to think about the rent. And we. Um, use deposit replacement insurance. So instead of paying a deposit every time you get a house, um, which would be like 50 grand sitting in an account somewhere, we get an insurance policy that covers the landlord up to 50 grand, um, which is a lot more than a couple of grand sitting in an account. Um, so you get the insurance. Um, we also have the insurance policies within the business as well. Um, and then we need to think about the furniture, you need to think about the, the fire doors, the smoke detectors. Uh, locks on doors, you've got to think about all the cutlery and, and pots and pans and all these little things to create this home for people. Um, so yeah, um, but the thing is, if you're going to start your rent-to-rent company, just just don't think of the finished product. Um, you know, if we were like starting out thinking, oh, we've got to get 83 rooms, you wouldn't get anything done. Just think about getting that first one. Just think about making this really cool company. What kind of vibe do you want to give off to people? What kind of style of rooms are you going to be selling to people? And understand what you are creating first off. Then go out to all the viewings and understand how that works. And then get your first house, work on that, get it full, then get the next one. Okay, um, Venus also says, do you pay the deposit to a landlord like a private buy to let when you first take the deal on? Um, so just now, we, we, we try not to pay deposits because it's dead money. Sitting in someone else's account making them some money, I, I hate that. Um, we use deposit replacement insurances where we can. In fact, I think we've only got two deposits sitting in accounts with houses out of our 17. Um, the rest we've used insurance policies, um, which is, uh, I think it's 27% of a month's rent is what we pay for the year. So it's very low. And we'd rather absorb that cost and have two, three grand sitting in an account. Okay, and I mean that's two two ways, isn't it? It's the, la the deposit you pay to the landlord when you rent the property off them initially. Do you mean the first month's rent? Yeah, that's basically what uh, Venus is saying, right, is okay. do you pay the landlord, well, yeah. like when you take a, an ordinary buy to let, if you were renting a property, you pay a deposit and a, um, you know, a month's rent up front. Yeah, so where we can, we try and negotiate a free rent period. The, the best one we've had was six weeks free. I, I asked for eight weeks free rent, and the landlord said, no, I'll give you six. And I was like, I was happy with two. So it depends on the landlord and the situation. If we can get a rent-free period, it means we can go in, do the work needed for free, not having to rent, get the rooms filled, and then by the time we actually start paying rent, we've got full income coming in, and it just runs itself. Yeah, and you've um, probably made money... Where, yeah. You probably made money as well. Exactly, exactly. Um, there are some where they won't budge and we'll have to pay full rent from the beginning. But it's fine because we incorporated that into our budgets initially. So it's kind of okay. It's just nice to get those cheeky little 
three weeks worth yeah, of Yeah, of course, it's, it's, it's one of them little things that's like a feel good, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, so Sheila says, how do you source your rent to rent property deals? Um, I use Rightmove, um, as people always use Rightmove, and now just word of mouth from agents. Agents contact me directly and say they've got this, they've got that. Because of who we are and the kind of name we've made for ourselves, um, yeah, people come to us now, which so, is great. So I mean, before, go. no one knew who we were, and it was really annoying. But I knew, I knew we were going to get to this stage, and um, it's just relationship building. So what, what, this is a question from me. Do you just wait until you've got the ne- the last one set up and running before you do the next one and then move on to the next one? Because like, if I had a bet with you for 50 grand, for instance, that you couldn't get another 10 rent-to-rent properties in the next eight weeks, um, you would yeah. probably go out of your way to get them. But how? <laughs> yeah, it, it's yeah. like... Cause, yeah. Yeah. Because right now you kind of just seem to be growing slowly rather than actually being focused in bang, 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 let's just get another 10 quickly. Yeah, I mean, you can do it that way. However, we're we're very calculated with what we do. We don't want to be inundated with things because, you know, things can go wrong. We are respecting the business and each other and our workloads and we are incrementally adding to the portfolio as and when that you know, we can actually manage it. Um, have been moments where we've taken on, or accidentally taken on, one or two houses at the same time. And we're like, whoa, wait a minute, this is a lot of rooms we've got to fill. We've got to work our asses off. And we did, and we had, you know, had them, and we filled them. And it, it was great. But there was a moment, I think it was a year and a half ago, we went from, I don't know, whatever level of income it was, and we kind of nearly, not doubled, but like we, we kind of added on a two or three rounds worth of profit, and we were like, whoa, this is insane. And, and it worked, you know, and it was fine. But it's also about um, the funding as well. You know, we've been fortunate enough to that, that, that Dad put in forty grand to begin with. And then we've met a lot of people on, along the way, and I've, got, I've had a lot of friends as well who put money in the business because they've seen what we're doing, and and I've offered them some very healthy returns, better than any bank would. Um, and yeah, and I've got a lot of friends' money sitting in the business, which, which is fantastic. But we. Um, we were being very calculated with it. We didn't want to go full steam ahead because it could have come crashing down and we didn't want that. We wanted to, to grow. And in fact, over the last six months, we have really seen that growth. So all that work we put in, we're actually seeing the benefits of it now. Okay. Um, right, so she also says, what type of properties do you look for that would be suitable for rent to rent? All depends on the area. Um, we have got, um, got a lot of five beds, a few six beds, a couple of four beds. We've even got one three bed, which makes us some... Well, that was an accident. That was We've got a landlord, we've got two houses with her, and then she had this third one. It just worked out really well. Um, traditionally, we'd look for a four bed house that's got two separate reception rooms. So we make a fifth bedroom, and we need to have at least two bathrooms, one being an ensuite. suite. So the house that I'm in right now, this is um, a four bed. And the fifth bed is downstairs. It's got one main bathroom, one downstairs toilet, and one ensuite. And our rents that we get in um, will equate to about about eight hundred pounds a month profit. But that's purely because of the area. There are some areas where we make more, and some we make a little bit less. It all depends on the postcode. Um, so we've been in the West Midlands. There's some fantastic houses in the areas that we've chosen to be in, but the rent is well priced compared to the actual sale price of the property. You know, we would, like, we've got a house right in Solihull Town Centre, which is about 700, maybe 800 grand, but we pay 1,880 pounds a month, and we make, uh, I think it's 1,250 pounds profit on that house. We wouldn't be making that kind of profit if we bought the house. So that's why, in fact, there's, that's, people ask me, why do you rent to rent? Why do you just buy them? The reason why we don't buy them is because you can't, you can't get really good returns if you're buying these mansions and these beautiful houses that we're that we're renting. And it doesn't matter about owning them. You know, this is a cash flow strategy. So in terms of looking for suitable properties, it depends on the area, depends on um, the, the price and the rent um, of the houses. Um, but traditionally, go for a four bed with two separate reception rooms, at least two bathrooms, and a, a communal area uh, with a kitchen, uh, and then you want to live in there. Okay, cool. So Murray says, what's your pitch to investors for rent to rent? Um, 
Why? You know, it's varied every single time. A lot of people have come to us and they've heard about us and said, are you looking for investors? So that's a very easy conversation to have. But um, when I've been looking, I, I, I speak to people that I know who have the, the capital and people looking to invest. And I just talk, just talk about the business, talk about us, because that's, that's what you're doing. You're having a conversation with a person and you know, people do business with people. So I don't just dive in and say, I need 10 grand or I need 20 grand. That, 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 that's no way to, to do it. Um, I just talk about what we've done, what we've achieved, and what we're looking to do, and ask if they would like to be part of it. That's essentially what I, what I talk about. Okay, cool. So, uh, question here says, do you rent your HMOs to charity organisations? Um, no, we don't. We only deal with high-end uh, clientele. So we have a lot of managers, a lot of um, doctors, um, we have um, all kinds of professionals working in every industry. So I guess white collar professionals. Um, so we, you know, we don't rent our rooms out to um, anything lower than a, I guess, a blue collar worker. Okay, uh, Carl's asked me to pass his email on. Carl, you have to send that in by email to me to info at glenarmstrong.com because um, I won't pick up on this at the end of it and just mention why and what it's all to do with so we know what to do with it. Um, Venu says, where do you advertise your rooms? Uh, rooms are on spare rooms. It's the biggest site for that. They're on uh, right move. Um, they are on idealflatmate.com and Facebook Marketplace. I advertise them on Instagram as well. And I actually had someone message me yesterday about a room. But Instagram's becoming a place uh, for, for people to, uh, to actually find rooms, which is great because we love using Instagram and we push out all of our pictures on there um, of our really cool rooms and stuff. Um, and we just talk about loads of other things on there. We've created a really nice gallery that people can actually have that social proof that we exist and we know what, what we do and we do it well. Okay, cool. And Sheila says, what's the maximum number of rooms you look for that would be suitable for as rent to rent? I think you mentioned that earlier on. <clears throat> yes, yeah, six is the maximum because after that you've got to look like a planet to change of use of the property. Um, so yeah, it's just a different kettle of fish. We don't want to get involved with that. Um, so yeah, six is the maximum. Ideally, five. That's a good amount of people in a house. Uh, and I don't like, from an HMO perspective, ever renting out a property unless it's really specialist or with like en suites for four or less. Because they're just not profitable. Um, I mean, it depends if the numbers stack up. I mean, if, if there was all suites in every room, that would be amazing. You know, we know we can sell those rooms really quickly, but it's just not the case. You know, a lot of the houses that we have were traditional family homes, which don't have that infrastructure inside. Um, there is one house that we've got, that is a family of builders that, that did it. We've got it's a five bed, five on suite house, so it's perfect. Um, but yeah, um, it's just about the available stock that's on the market, but it just use what's out there. Okay, um, so tell us a little bit, Vina's asking a little bit about your team that you have in place at the moment. Um, you're making 17 grand a month, obviously the rent income is a lot more than that, so your team is part of your own head, but what is your team at the moment? So yeah, our team, we've got so me, my brother Simon and David Mick, we are the managing directors of the business. We have Karis, our property manager, so she deals with all the admin and a lot of viewings and check-ins and liaising with tenants. She does the checks every month for all the houses. Um, we've got a cleaning team. We've got a gardener. We've got an electrician and a plumber on hand whenever we want them. Uh, they're just contractors. Um, and then we have a carpenter as well. He works with all the fire doors and all that stuff. Because uh, my dad can do it, but he doesn't really like doing it anymore. Uh, so it's time, very time consuming. So we get, we get Martin to do that, and he's fantastic. Um, and that's essentially the team. Oh, we've got. Um, so we do some of our marketing for us. We have uh, we have Rachel, um, and yeah, that counts everyone. I think. Oh, we've got our accountant, of course, uh, who's amazing, very very good, um, and uh, yeah, and our investors, who are obviously silent within the business. They are they aren't part of it. They are just yeah, just being with us um, or or just investing. So uh, so yeah, we've got a great kind of community that we've built, uh, just helping push us forward. Okay, cool. Uh, Vinu, now I know you uh, mentioned earlier on quickly what CRM you were using, but see, Vinu is asking what CRM you're currently using. Uh, we're using Podio, 
uh, Simon, he's the, he's the techie wizard. He created uh, an, an epic CRM um, for us using Podia, so you can, can customise it. And it's great. It's great for what we've, uh, what we've wanted. But um, Simon's been doing some research to others, and there's another one that he's found. He's going to be working on that this summer. Um, and then we're going to push that out and then start using that. Uh, but yeah, so I would recommend Podia for starting out 100%. Okay, cool. Uh, again, different people asking about contacting you, Dan. So uh, if anyone uh, wants to contact them, email me at info at denomstrom.com and we'll pass on your details. Um, sure. So, um, so David said, do we pay the rent for the whole year or pay monthly or contract basis to the landlord? Um, you would just, David, you just pay your rent as normal on a month to month basis. Uh, hopefully, get in a couple of months up free, up front. And um, look, so, Simon, what's the minimum profit you would take on a property, potential profit? Because if you take on a property with 200 quid potential, the chances are it's never going to make that. So, you just got yourself a job. But it's unusual yeah. to get more than a thousand pounds a month per property. Um, well, we set off uh, to begin with making at least 700 a month because that would be at least one one bedroom's worth and then a, a bit more of another one. You don't want to get any less than, than one bedroom's worth of, of profit because if that room is empty, that, that final room, then you're not making any money. Which, what, then what's the point? So we now, now we're in a position where we can be very choosy. We only really go for, for a grand a month. I mean, this house that we're in right now, I mean, it's 800, but it's next door to one of our other houses, and that's why that's why we got it. So it's kind of a bit, a bit of a lap drop. So we're happy with that. Um, but we, we know that these rooms will go quickly and will always be gone because of the location. Um, so yeah, us now personally, yeah, a grand a month is, is what we aim for. Um, but definitely not under 700. It's just not worth it. Okay. Um... Right, so just skipping through because we've got so many questions here. Two questions, I'm going to kind of build them into one. Does Dan pay market value rent from the landlord? So, sorry, that's a different question, but do you pay market value rent or do you get a bit of discount? Um, every deal's different. Um, we try and obviously pay less because he wants to pay more. And um, one of the reasons why they should go with this because, you know, we, we, we provide um, a no, no void uh, kind of service for landlords. So we'll, we'll pay the rent every, every month for the duration of the contract. Whereas if they were going to have a normal family in, normally they're for like a year and a half, maybe two years, they might have a couple of void periods. In fact, this current landlord, the previous tenant didn't pay for the last two months, so he's about three grand down. Um, so whereas we, if we negotiate a lower rent overall, they will be, you know, making money every month, and maybe it's a little bit less, but it's a lot less than, than a full month or a void or two months of void. So we kind of frame it that way for them, so they can understand that. Some don't go for it, but you know, we do the calculations based on the market uh, value, so we're happy to go with it. Obviously, we want to make more money, but ultimately, you know, we make sure the numbers stack up initially in whatever eventuality that the deal might go to. Okay, cool. Um, kind of a combination of questions. Can you recommend an insurance company that covers your landlord and also uh, what is the insurance you have instead of the deposit? Um, it's the deposit replacement insurance. So it's called DRI for short. Um, there are some specialist companies that deal with them. Um, insurance desk do all of our insurances and then the DRI, do you know what, I can't remember the name? But whoever wants to know that, they can, they can send the details and I can email them the, the, the names and, and, and the policies. Okay. Cool. That's no problem. All right. <clears throat> Melanie says, what do you allocate as a budget for furnishings? Um, um, okay, again, every house is different. It really depends. Um, so roughly per bedroom, but then you've got the kitchen, obviously. Yeah, um, let me just think. A five-bed house... I think it's about five grand. Five grand with, with all the beds, the beds, bedside tables, draw, drawers, wardrobes, um, all the kitchen stuff, TV, sofas, all the de decorations, all the artwork and things like that. I think it's about five grand, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so Mick says, 
uh, no damage doing rent to rent, but what value of properties do you normally go for? Um, we find, again, it's, it's about the postcode. Um, we've got um, a house in Warwick that is, we pay a grand a month, and we make, when it's fully let at the, at the proper prices, we make a grand profit. So that's, that's great. Um, there are properties where we pay a lot more and, and we make less. So again, it all depends on, on the postcode. Um, we are finding there are a few houses um, that really are making us a lot of money. Uh, and so we'd rather go for houses in those areas because the rents is, is, are at a good price. Is it about area or is there a sweet spot in value of properties that you rent? Um, it's, it's, it's area really, uh, because like we can have a really nice four bed house it's been done up really well, um, and then um, we can have, a, I guess, a bigger five bed house because it's bigger. There's more, you know, you pay more rent. It's, it's, so it, it, there's, there's no continuity with things, um, and it all depends on the agent as well, um, okay. and I guess the landlord. The, you know, the landlord might insist on having some ridiculous figure, and they're not gonna, not gonna budge. So you know, that's up to them. Okay. Uh, but if they want, if they want a continual rent, and if they're willing to drop the price. Then obviously, yeah, we, we, we could go for it. But um, we, we, we're very picky and choosy now. We, whereas three years ago, we were trying to get anything we possibly could. Yeah, of course. Um, Dave Bird says, would rent to rent work in London? Um, well, it does. I mean, it's massive. It's kind of where it really started. Um, I don't know the London areas that well in terms of what's working right now. What is? I mean, I know, I know London very well, but in terms of rent to rent, I mean, there's so many restrictions and there's Article 4 areas. You really need to do your research into London. In fact, I wouldn't really touch London to be honest, because I don't think you're going to make a profit. Although saying that, um, with what's happened, I guess there's a lot of a lot of rentals available, a lot of a lot of paying uh, landlords who need to get their properties rented. So um, I mean, it's worth looking, but you really do need to do due diligence to the areas um, and, and get everything correct, um, and just be willing to compromise, I guess, on on their on some profits, whereas if you can go a little bit out of London, into those little kind of pockets where maybe there's commuter towns, then that's fine. However, again, with what's happened, a lot of people are not in offices and probably won't be for a long time, and potentially offices and companies are going to restructure everything so people can actually work from home more often. So are people going to want to be living in a house show in London? Who knows? Uh, no, London market is kind of uh, very wobbly at the moment. and. And when I say London, I mean central London more than anywhere else. Um, yeah. Melanie says, what kind of percentage do you build into your budget for voids? Um, we, we don't actually do that. we just got to make sure those rooms are full. I mean, we incorporate, I think we can have, now we can have six empty rooms at any one time. Like proper empty meetings. So what, what's that, 10%, uh, 8%? Um, about 8%, yeah. Okay, cool. All right, now I'm going to finish off. Um, I love your story about your car and <laughs> about um, the why and all that type of stuff. So to finish off, please share with everybody on here who's not heard the story about your why in your car, about your why in your car story. Okay, um, I love BMWs and Ever since I heard that the 4 series was coming out, I just really wanted it. Uh, and I had no idea how I was going to get it or afford it, um, but I wanted it. So I, I, I put the pictures, the concept pictures, in an album on my phone in, I think it was 20, 2014, maybe. And um, I looked at it every day. And I took them for test drives, and I was like, I'm going to get this car. And I had a picture of me holding the steering wheel, and I was like, I'm going to get this car one day. Um, I just didn't know how I was going to do it. And then, obviously, one thing led to another. And then as the business started to propel, my old uh, BMW, my had a one series, that came to an, uh, an end. I had to extend it for another year because I just, just couldn't afford to get another one. Uh, but then in 2018, everything kind of aligned itself and I got an insane deal on a bespoke made BMW 4 Series Coupe um, and I picked it up from the, uh, the dealer in Soho in the, the Handover Bay. It was, it was in a silk sheet. I took it off and um, there was my car, the car of my dreams. Um, and um, I was with my bro and we drove it off the forecourt and um, and we were like, well, what, what song should we play? We need to have a song to remember this forever. And we were thinking about it and we thought, do you know what, there's one song that Glenn always plays 
the mastermind group every Saturday, got it on Saturdays every month, and it was um, It's My Life by Bon Jovi. It was quite a fitting song, because that really kind of just gets you going. So we put that on full blast, and we drove around around Solihull, uh, we had the Bon Jovi one, um, just like savouring that moment. And in fact, in, on August 20th, me and Sai were going to drive down to Exeter, because Sai's had his Mercedes E-Class coupe built, and that's where it's uh, coming from. And we're going to drive down in my car, and we're going to pick it up, and they're probably going to put the same same song on as well. So it's it's size turn to have one. Brilliant. Thank you so much for joining us this evening, Dan. Uh, and Thank you for having me. Helping everybody else on their way. Um, obviously, if anyone's got any um, uh, anything that they needed to ask from. Uh, Dan, please feel free to drop me an email, Glenn, uh, info at glenarmstrong.com and we'll pass it on. Um, uh, tomorrow evening, um, we are talking to Stuart on his no money left in portfolio building that he's doing in uh, a little bit further north than the Midlands. Um, so please join us tomorrow if that's of interest to you. Um, thank you very much one more time, Dan. Thank you. And Appreciate thanks it. everyone for joining us this evening. Have a great evening. Make sure you stay safe. Please don't get complacent. Uh, and I will speak to you all tomorrow evening.